This is uh, <clears throat> the next to the last <laughs> class. And they're going, how many times have we heard this? It's how confusing. Uh, class that we're doing. And we've been talking about in Christ. And we've been showing the um, benefits of that. Uh, if you remember sometime before, we were talking about we were pretty much putting emphasis on Christ in you, and that's why we went on to this class. And <clears throat> I think uh, Kelly and who else? Somebody else was teaching in Christ, Robert. So, so you should have had a good dose and know everything. So having that assurance, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. Tell me one benefit of being in Christ. That I don't have to answer questions? No, that's not one of the benefits. Okay, Robert? By him, I'm knowing the Father. Right. Amen. Okay, somebody else? Chris? That he's all the spiritual blessings. He's been after him with being with him. So being in him and us with that mistake. Brother, thank you for listening. <laughs> thank you so much. Tonight, I will just have this big smile and go, <clears throat> amen, amen. By the way, are you ready to make that announcement, or will it be Sunday morning that you have? Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm finished with school. <laughs> <laughs> just in time to be able to start school, <laughs> except it's a little different, yeah. going after the Lord. Amen. Okay, someone else. Yeah. Enter boldly, boldly into the throne of grace. It's uh, it's coming before the Father. No, not just like what's right, it, but like you know, it's like we can, like I was talking about it with my dad. It's kind of like Esther, like she was bold. She boldly into, but there was a humbleness about it. So it's, it's like by that sense, Amen. being in Him, we can enter in. Amen. Was there a little Star Trek mixed in with that? Come boldly, you know, yes. where no man has gone before <laughs> in Christ. Yes. Okay, let's see. Caitlin. <laughs> She's trying to not make eye contact. <laughs> Uh, and so I'm going, mm, and she's going, Who's, who around me has that? Nobody, it's me. Yes. Uh, we get to partake of his death, as in we were crucified with him. <laughs> okay. That's what I wanted to talk about. Okay. It's a wonderful reality. Okay. But before we get there, and that that, that is in... Um, uh, chapter, it's in Romans, and it's in chapter 6. Before we do that, <clears throat> let's look at chapter 5 so that we can see, you know, this, this treasure of reality that is ours because we're in Him, okay? So we're going to start, we're going to be in Romans 5, and we're going to start <clears throat> um, at verse 8. <clears throat> So the first part of this is just going to sort of present kind of the, the basic understanding that people have pertaining to salvation. Uh, but then it's going to move into the reality of being in Christ. So verse 8 begins, But God commendeth his love toward us. So the, is that cool or what? I mean, we, we usually think God commended his salvation to us, you know, and Yay, Jesus saved me. No, he commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in, uh, in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, which I think is part of what Robert was saying. Uh, we, uh, 
Not only so, verse 11, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ because we're able to actually begin to know the Father through him too. Um, <clears throat> uh, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, okay, so up to that point it has been sort of the generic, he saved us, we were sinners, we didn't deserve it, uh, but, you know, we're, we're there. And, and I, I don't mean to make light of that, I just mean we all should know this part. <laughs> you know, I shouldn't have to go into all that part. <clears throat> okay, But at verse 11 then, he begins to show this thing, and he begins to show this thing of being in Christ in a contrast of what we were when we were in Adam, okay? And so he is going to um, uh, go through all of the things that were us because we were in Adam, mm -hmm. and now he's going to show us what is true of us because we're in him, okay? In him, you know? And um, gosh... I was thinking about a verse today that said would, would have been good right there. All right, so verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin. Okay, so the, the action of Adam caused everybody to be born in sin. <clears throat> um, for until the law, that's verse 13, for until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Verse 15, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense, meaning what one man did, and we were in him, <clears throat> Um, uh, offense of one for let's see for if through the offense of one many be dead much more the grace of God okay and that grace coming by Christ the grace the gift of grace which is by one man Jesus Christ hath abounded to many okay <clears throat> and not as it was by one that had sinned so is the gift for the judgment was by one to condemnation meaning Adam but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification for if by one man's offense death reigned by one by the nature of Adam much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ okay so <clears throat> um, this we, we've looked at this, but here you see um, righteousness, and here you see the, the gift of righteousness, and you see the abundance of grace um, shall reign in life by one. And that's the one that we're in. This is ours because we're in him. This is not ours because we prayed a little prayer, and God went, okay, you poor pitiful sinner, you know, I'm going to be nice to you now. I'm going to be nice. You know, and it's like, oh, thank God. You know. <clears throat> anyway, I'm, I'm sure it's not quite like that. <laughs> but it is me presenting this, so. Okay. Um, verse 18, therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Okay. So the understanding is this. You didn't become a sinner because you sinned. You were a sinner because you were born in Adam. Okay. That's right. And we haven't had a lot of time to go over that, but I'm sure somebody has and will before you get through with this stuff. <clears throat> um, 19 again, for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so grace even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. <clears throat> All right, so um, <clears throat> in this, uh, really up to this point, starting with 
Mm, well, we'll just say the, the first chapter of Romans. Um, you have the atonement being set forth, and the atonement and the reality of that atonement is yours in Christ. Now, we did see that in Colossians. It is in Ephesians. <clears throat> um, and uh, it's not just like, like handed to you. It's a free gift because you're now in him. All right? And um, God, when God gives a gift, he doesn't take it away. You know? Okay? So there's all these chapters that are dealing with the atonement, and all of it meant to bring assurance to us. Okay? So... <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> so the but I didn't see anything there worth quoting uh, so uh, the reality usually that fixes in our mind is okay if I'm in, in Christ <clears throat> then um, you know it doesn't matter what I do or all that kind of stuff and um, in the sense of uh, security, yes, there is incredible security in Christ, <clears throat> but it's now, tonight, it's important that we understand that being in Christ does more than give us security of salvation. It gives us freedom in certain areas, and that's why we're about to move into uh, Romans 6. Okay, so let's go to Romans 6. Uh, verse starting with verse 1. <clears throat> so after saying all this stuff, see, because that's the end of 5, and then this is immediately verse 6, what shall we say then? Okay. Then what do we say? We say, well, praise God. You know, what's in Christ is, is settled and everything's cool. Yes, but, but embrace everything that's in Christ. Not just the good parts, you know, <laughs> you know. And, um, and one of the things that this is about to explain is that one of the things we have that we got by being in Christ was we're dead. <laughs> okay, I mean, it's true. Now, folks, that's just as free and easy as every other part. It, you know, it, um, okay, so Ephesians says you are accepted in the beloved. That's you're accepted in Christ. So I'm accepted in Christ, okay? Well, no, you have to understand that you're dead. You're accepted in Christ because you're now figured as his body, him. Do you see that? So, it, so the other is, in my opinion, the other is fine, and I think a person should walk in uh, those things that we've been talking about for the rest of their life. I know they have secured me, um, but just like Romans 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and then 5 gives you all this hope and security, Romans 6 gives you an incredible security over your own flesh, if you know, and... Um, but you have to embrace it the same as the other. I mean, you have to... For example, you can, the, the, the Scripture can say to you, you are accepted in the beloved. Then Randy can stand up here and say to you, you are accepted in the beloved. You know, that you're in him. You're not, and I would usually say something like this, you're not accepted by the beloved. Right? Anybody ever heard that before? Yes. Your whole life, some of you. <laughs> you are accepted in the beloved and part of the reason why you're accepted in the beloved is because you're not in there in your old nature form isn't that isn't that good yes. i mean praise god and you can say well i feel like i am because i i keep sinning okay you might feel like it but the truth is you are still in him and this is still true and the goal is not to, not to go, okay, well, I'm going to go attack sin. You know, the goal is to, is to reckon on what has been accomplished already and move with that 
the same way that you do with I'm accepted in the beloved. In other words, you can walk around, you've been born again, you go, well, God couldn't love me because I'm so bad, and God couldn't love me, you know, I, you know, I got a poor self-image, and, you know, why would he want me, and all this kind of, and somebody come along and say, dude, shut up. I mean, maybe not laugh, but you're accepted in the beloved. You're accepted in him. It's already, it didn't say you will be. It says you are. Accepted. Past tense. E-D at the end of accept. So then they go, oh, really? Oh, could it be true? Could it be true, really? So I don't have to go. Uh, you know what? I know this because I went through this. <laughs> Because, you know, being an orphan and all that stuff, you know, so it's like, oh, my God, oh, my God, really? And it's like, I'm going to believe this. You know what I mean? Because I, I get tripped up by the enemy every time if I don't. And he beats me down. Every time I feel something good in the Lord, then the enemy comes and knocks me down and says, you know, well, look at you. Da, 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 da. But now, look what I can do. I can be found in him, not having mine own righteousness. I can, I, can, I can do that, and I can stand on that, and I can believe that right now. What is it? That's in, that's in Peter, I think it is, that he says, uh, having not seen, you have da 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 because, and it's talking about being in him, or in whom. Having not seen, you're still in him. See, you may see him in the scriptures, you may have him revealed in you, but you cannot see the in Christ reality as it is. You have to believe it. And it goes on, I think, in those scriptures saying, having believed. Mm -hmm. See, it adds all the elements of great scripture really, along this line. <clears throat> so, okay, so... You know, you pass through that valley, that valley of unacceptance and all that stuff and, all, you know, uh, <clears throat> unworthiness, you know. You pass through that because you're accepted in the beloved. Well, anything else that's in there, you do the same thing. You understand? Anything else that you, you know, it's the same faith. It's just pointed at something different, you know. You know, I would, if this, if we still had all my equipment up here, I would go, well, this microphone is mine. It actually still might be. Anyway, uh, <laughs> this microphone is mine, you know. Uh, but I don't know if I can believe for this mic stand. If you can, you know, if you can believe for that, this is, you know, well, it's shaped different. What? You know, I mean, do you see how we, we, we get all, and it's like, okay, this is mine, the Lord gave it to me, this is mine, this is mine, this is mine, and I'm in him. And it's not mine, mine, it's mine in him. It's not mine, mine, get it? It's not mine, mine, it's mine in him. Okay? Well, where are you? You're in him, <laughs> you know? You know? That's where you are. So these are the assurances that it gives you. Okay? So the so the writer, Paul, the writer of Romans, is being very, very kind to us because he's literally showing that the worst people in the first couple of chapters there are still can be saved and accepted in the beloved. You see that? The worst. You remember the first couple of chapters? Yes. I mean, <clears throat> but it brings up to, you know, uh, I mean, the, those first couple of chapters, I mean, it starts off and it, and it starts talking about, you know, rank sin and perversion and all this stuff, you know, and, and, uh, and of course, the Jews that are listening to it are going, oh, yuck, those people, oh. And then so Paul go, starts going into the Jews and starts saying, well, you're just as bad as them. Look what you do. And you've broken God's law and you've done things against God. They're just doing things in the flesh. You're literally da 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 da. And they go, oh, you know. He, I mean, he just, he, and he goes, all are concluded in sin, right? 
He just he just puts it all, and he and basically he's saying, you know, whatever your the whatever reactions you're having over this group or that group or whatever, in God's eyes you're just as bad, period. And then he starts coming in with this wonderful reality, but Jesus died for all of you, whosoever will, you know. You start going, oh, thank God, you know. But I mean, I would felt bad about myself, but once he made me Romans one and two, I'm going. Then three and four, I'm like, I'm ready for four, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> so, so in His mercy, the Lord is using Paul to bring us all the way through that, and we're going through it, and we're going through it, and then we get up to uh, how this thing is, is seen by Him. And how it's seen by him is that we're in his son. This is how the father sees it. You're in son. You're in Christ. You're in Jesus. And, and being in him uh, is wipes away all that was true when you were in Adam. Okay? And so he gives us all of the good stuff, you know, like in Ephesians and all that stuff. All the good stuff. All the good stuff. But then, like Romans here, <clears throat> by the time he gets to chapter 6... He's going, okay, you know, you've, you've yayed all the way. Every time he'd say something, yay, you know, and then he'd go, oh, yay, you know, yay. You know, yay. Now he gets to chapter six, you're dead in Christ. What? I don't want the microphone, you know, <laughs> whatever. <clears throat> but it's just as true, and it, and it is it is the only way that you could be accepted in the beloved. <laughs> You see that? Yeah. Think about it for a second. Any deep thoughts now? You just watched me drink, didn't you? And that was all you were doing. <clears throat> all right. So let's read Romans 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? So that's, see, do you see where what shall we say then came from? You know, he's, he's only said good stuff. He's only said stuff that you want to hear up to this part. So he goes, well, what shall we say there? We go, well, I, I can do anything I want. I can kill people. I can, you know, I can do all this stuff. And he goes, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Now, here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. What shall we say? Shall we continue in sin? God forbid. And so here goes our mind. See, we, have, we don't have the reality of God's heart concerning Christ and Him crucified formed in us. So we, 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 we start looking at God and we go, God forbids it. God forbids it. Don't do that. God forbids it. Because we're under the law. We think we're righteous, but we're leaving the truth in Christ. We're leaving it by doing that. Do you see that? What should we say? Uh, shall we continue? God forbid. How shall we that are dead? He's not even going over here and saying, okay, let's look at the book. I look right here. You know, this says, you know, God's saying, let's look at the book. It says right here, you're dead. You see what I mean? That's where he lives. That's where he thinks. That's our God. The cross is, the, the cross has, has swept in and brought a whole new creation forward in his death and in his resurrection. A whole new creation. You're not the same. The law is no longer the issue. Christ is the issue. Christ crucified is the issue. Christ risen is the issue. There are no other issues. And every time we walk around and go, well, this... This music stand, you know, it needs to be fixed. See how wobbly it is? You know, we're, I'm just talking about some subject that we pull out of the law and say, well, this says this and this and this and this. Well, God said, okay, yeah, it did. And God did say that. But why did, I mean, it even, we even read that. Why did the law, why did the law come in to show us our sins, right? Okay. So if you have come into Christ, you said, you know, I'm a sinner. I deserve what? 
freedom. No, <laughs> I deserve death. So then he brings about that death in Christ, in his son. He brings it about in his son. And when he does, that son goes into death and he takes you and the law for you're dead to the law. Doesn't it say that in Galatians? Where in Galatians? Galatians 2 what? 219. What's the next verse? Let's hear it. That's good enough. The verse before it says you're dead to the law. And then he says, you know, I'm just dead in general. <laughs> you know, I'm crucified with Christ. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, Christ. That's a whole new regime. That's a whole new creation. That's a whole new reality. God has swept in and put it all in His Son. Everything was in the earth. Everything was in man. Everything was do the best you can. Keep this. Da, 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 da. Well, you can keep it. You'll keep it some of the times. Or you'll keep this, but you won't keep this. And the Scripture says if you break the law in one point, you broke the whole thing. Was God smart in doing that? Yes. Did you see the wisdom behind that? Because he's going, you know, he's going, uh, um, you know, you come up and say, well, this is a music stand violation. And God's going, well, you did a folding chair violation over here. You're both wrong now. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way he looks at it. Everything's new. Behold, all things have become new and all things are of God. They're not of us. Amen. They're not of our minds. They're not of our trying. They're not our... You can't try... Well, you can try all you want, but you can't do good enough to please God. If you could have, what does the Scripture say? He wouldn't have... Righteousness would have come by the law. Right? Is that what it says? Then righteous... If, 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 if the law could have given life, this is what it says. If the law could have given life, well, what life is that talking about? Jesus. Christ in you is their hope. You in Christ is too, is your hope also. Okay? If the law could have given life, then verily, Righteousness would have come by the law, but it can't give life. See, in fact, it does the opposite. It condemns you to death for failure. No man ever kept the law. Jesus didn't even keep the law. Let's see if I can shock some people. <laughs> Jesus didn't keep the law. Nanny, nanny, nanny. Jesus didn't keep the law. He fulfilled the law. He was the fulfillment of it. That's what God wanted. You're the fulfillment. He didn't say, you're the keeper of the law. He said, you're the one that is the fulfillment. That's what I want. I want you. And you fulfill that. Yes, Jesus. So then it says, all of that is over with. That's right. You know, all of that's over with. And we go, so I don't have to keep? No. But you want... The, what does it say in Romans 8? Anybody can quote that one? Romans 8, 1. The, oh. Here's where God and sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, condemn sin, sin, in, condemn sin the in the flesh. Okay, so what the law could not do in that it was weak through our flesh. We go, well, the law is right. God gave it. Yeah, it did, and it's right, but it only, it's only right if it's fulfilled, not kept. And Christ fulfilled it. Okay, well, it is. It's huge, you know. And it's weak through our flesh, but... God sending his son in the flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh and became the fulfillment yeah, the of the law. Verse, so the next verse says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Salute. <laughs> that's Romans 8 40. That's the way I believe it because that's the way he says it in the New Testament now. Yeah. So now he's, 
he's laying things out in a different spirit. Amen. Okay, so uh, so look at the writers. Look at all the writers uh, of the New Testament. New Testament. New Testament. Where are they getting their information from? From the what would some would call the law, you know. But they're seeing it in a different light. They're seeing it in light of Christ crucified. Right? Because if they're, if they're not, if they're seeing it in the same light as the law, then why the heck did we need a new covenant? <laughs> right? Well, it's always been true. You shouldn't have music stand sins. And he's just going... You know, I mean, if I could and I would, but I'd just kick that thing, knock it out of the way, just to demonstrate uh, that is that physical thing is not it. I want the life of Christ. I want the life of Christ. I want him to fulfill it. I want him. And, and the law, what does it say? The law is fulfilled in us. Doesn't it say? Did you just read the same one? Would you read it again, please? That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled. Wait, stop. But the righteousness, not the law, the righteousness of the law, the righteousness of the law has to do with him and his nature and, and the right standing he has with God, which Jesus is, doesn't have. Jesus isn't going, well, what do you want me to do today? You know, show me the list of commandments, you know, live if the law had given life. Let Christ live. See? But to do that, that's why we're looking at Romans, there has to be a death. You know why? Because if not, everybody's going to be griping about what's, you know. Um, you know, one of the, uh, something hit me not long ago, that most of the divisions between the churches and the denominations are over things that aren't plainly written in the Bible. There's room, wiggle room. So they're going, well, you know, I believe you have to be baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Well, I believe you have to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, to me, that, okay, yes, Lord. <clears throat> to me, <laughs> baptism represents death. Yes. You know, it's like, well, what name am I being baptized in? You're, who cares? You're dying. <laughs> You're going down, baby. He's coming up. This is what water baptism represents. But, you know, years ago when I was a young man, is that cough because you're <laughs> just kidding? <laughs> some, I was going to baptize some people and... Uh, and someone said, well, what name are you going to baptize me in? I said, well, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they said, well, well, the Bible says to, to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I said, well, it also says, you know, I, I did the old, you know. It also says that. And they're going, well, you know, everybody that you baptize needs to be rebaptized. That's what they said. And I'm going, are you kidding me? You need to be baptized into his death. My God. So, you know, because they're standing there, husband and wife watching the baptism like this. Wonder what he's going to do. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, which is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, buried by baptism into death, raised unto newness of life. That's the way I baptize. Anybody know that that's been baptized by me? That's why I do it. Two reasons. The last part is you're buried by baptism into death. You're not, you know, it's not about you anymore. It's about him coming up. Him being the life, him being the resurrection, him being the reality. And the other part is, 
for these fuddy-duds that are going to fight over the Word of God and, and make it law and not really see the spirit of what this thing is about, and there's no death working in them, I will, I will lay down my life. I will be the lamb for them and baptize them in this way, and I'll be that way for the people that I'm baptizing so that if they run into these or anybody else like them, they can they say, well, what name were you baptized in? You can say, which one do you prefer? <laughs> so I'm trying to save you some trouble too, you see. But I'm not fooled by it. I'm not fooled by that. I, I, I um, understand that people are going about to establish their own righteousness. Right? That says that in the scripture. Going about this job and not have submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God in Christ. Okay? Have not submitted themselves. They haven't yet submitted themselves to the reality of Christ. And the, the new creation is, is, okay, if any man be in Christ, old things are passed away. That means that you're conforming to the one that you're in. I read something the other day, um, and it was talking about um, this person that, um, uh, for whatever reason, you know how people going on um, uh, one, two, three, getting their DNA checked to see Ancestry.com, all that kind of stuff, and some of them are using DNA and stuff, and <clears throat> so this person got on there, so the police showed up at his door. <clears throat> Anybody read this story? The police show up at his door. And he goes, you're a criminal. And he says, except for the fact that you're much older than what this criminal did. And uh, he's saying, what basis are you basing this on? He says, your DNA. He said, what? You know, what are you talking about? So they had to call in a bunch of experts, come to find out. He had a bone marrow transplant. And the bone marrow, the, the DNA in the bones started taking over, and it took over, <clears throat> let's say, uh, the blood. His blood was completely different, and his semen was completely like this other guy's. And the, so the police are freaking out because they're going, well, if, the, you know, if somebody like that, that had this happen, they raped somebody, and, but it's... Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, it gets real confusing. But they were freaking out. And I was going, yay, when I'm in Christ, his DNA starts taking over. You know what I mean? And I've used that phraseology for a long time. But now I have proof. <laughs> so, I mean, just it's just amazing. And apparently they're checking this guy and they said, well, not all the areas had taken over. It was funny because it's like it's in his lips, different DNA, Weird. you know, and his liver and stuff like that. But I thought the two main things that really were totally taken over was his blood and his semen, meaning, meaning the life and the producing of life. Oh, That's enough for me. That's enough for me to understand, yes, Lord. I, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away and all things are become new. And now it's him. And now we're joined to him. And now it's about him. And it's not about the law anymore. That would be so dumb. Okay, they're over here, the law. And they're doing the thing. And I'm sure I'm far from the microphone here. And, but they're, okay, yes. We need to stick with this. I mean, Moses was a wise man. Well, he was a wise man, and he was of God. But when Moses showed up with Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration, and, and Peter's going, well, we need to make booths for all three of these guys. God's saying there ain't three. There's one. The overshad God the Father overshadows everybody, and Jesus is the only one that's seen. You know? Moses is going, hey, could you knock the fog back a little bit? I'm trying to read the Bible, you know. I'm trying to read the law, you know. No, you're overshadowed. Here's the new life. 
And it's not just a new Christian life, and that gets me off in areas. I'm so thankful this music stand's been standing here, because I've really used it tonight. <laughs> we, you know, we say, well, I've got a new life, you know. And we go, uh, but here's what we say. We say, well, you know, I got a new life. I used to go to bars, and, uh, and I used to drink, and I used to get drunk, and I'd sing body songs, not not body songs but body songs <laughs> there's a difference people you need to <laughs> check it out and you know and I used to cuss and I used to all this stuff but now I go to church and I sing body songs <laughs> and, I, and you know and all this stuff and um, so we go see I'm very changed Okay, well, let's try putting you in a couple of situations to see how you handle it. You know what I mean? I mean, one good thing that keeps Christians from sinning is you keep stuffing them in the church building. You know? But Christ can live his life anywhere. You know that? Mother Teresa in Calcutta and taking care of lepers and, you know, you know. She's not, she never got leprosy. She hugged him, she loved him, you know. She never got leprosy. Her DNA won't take it. Because <laughs> when it's Christ, we don't have to worry. We worry about this because it's not Christ. We worry about this because it's not Christ in us. We worry about this. So, so like the Pharisees, we go, well, I have to establish my own righteousness then. Right, I have to establish my own righteousness then. So if it, if I can't if it can't be Christ here and here and here, then again it's the old, uh, you know, this is my righteousness, and then we forget about this one over here. And again, God says, if you break it in one area, you've broken it all. Whether it's that the drums or that chair over there or the guitar or the bass or the, any of that stuff. Any one of those void out everything that you've done right. <laughs> right? That's what it says. That's... All right. So, the realization, the wonderful realization is that Christ now is my life. And uh, am I doing everything perfect? Are you? Okay. But Paul said... Paul said this. It's not as though I have al already attained. <laughs> but he said, I am pressing towards the mark of the prize of the high calling where? In Christ. In Christ. He recognizes the reality that this is where the DNA comes from to be able to do all of it. <clears throat> and now the issue is no longer the law. That's what I love about this. I don't know what I did. But don't worry, I'll take care of it. Uh, <clears throat> God forbid, and we go, God forbid. Well, God just forbids that. Don't do it. God forbids it. But here's the basis he forbids it on. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer? And he's not forbidding it because it's wrong. Does anybody hear what I'm saying here? Yes. He's not forgetting, forbidding it because it's wrong. He's forbidding it because we're going, we're, we're living outside of the reality of being dead in Him. We're not drawing from the in Him reality. We're just drawing from the law. <clears throat> and that don't work. Okay? And that doesn't work. Because why? Because we are effectively living as Jews. I mean, how many Jews we got in here? You know, and if you're not Jewish, stop trying to keep the law. <laughs> right? And if you're a Jew that got born again, then live Christ the way Paul did. All right. Um, so he's going, God forbids this. God forbids this. And it's not, it's not a God up there going, I forbid this. I forbid this. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's not, he's not up there going, I forbid this. He says, 
Paul is saying his mind. How shall we that are dead live any longer in it? No, you're not that as many of us as were, oh, baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. See, he's even taken any sin and saying, bringing you up and saying, the true spirit of what happened to you was your death and Christ coming up. And he's saying, don't leave that. That's really the, the whole book of Galatians. I mean, the whole book of Galatians is have you, having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect in the flesh, you know? And uh, have you not heard what the law, you either want to keep the law, have you not heard what the law says? <laughs> I mean, this are, Galatians will slap you in the face, man. Paul will go, okay, look, you need to get this, you know? He's, and he knows that this is, this is so important. He's, he was the one who came and led the Galatians, and that's not just one church, but many in a, in a large area, led them to the Lord. And now he's finding him trying to go to the law, and he's going, no, 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 no. And he spells it out. Anyway, he's spelling that out here, too. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. Okay, so... He's, he's talking about God forbidding sin, but he's not talking about him forbidding it because he doesn't like it. He's saying, no, don't you know what happened to you in him, in Christ? See, you're accepted in the beloved, but you need to know you're accepted because you're dead to the law. And you're not keeping the law. You can't keep the law. If you try to keep the law, then you're under the law. And you're responsible for the whole law. So you go, you, you find your place in him. You find your place in his death. You find your place in, in him, in, in what we would call his resurrection. So we'll read that. Uh, verse 3, know you not that as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we're buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised, he didn't say, like, so you were buried by baptism in the, the, his death and you were raised. It says Christ was raised and you're his body now. He didn't raise up a bunch of people. Jesus didn't come up and then a bunch of people, hey, look, there's a bunch of us. <laughs> we're, we're all together. No, no, we're all dead. Christ lives in us. All right. And this is ours in Christ. We should love this. <clears throat> like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. Or, as it says in the Spanish and probably most other translations, we should walk in new life. It's another life. It's a new life, a life we never had before. It's Christ. See? So he's saying, you know, the goal, he, he, Paul would be saying it like this, the goal isn't not to, is not, don't sin. God forbids that. Don't do that. The goal is Christ. Live. Let him live in you. You live in him. You hold that place in him. You, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Hold that reality. Live from there. And anyway, so, I mean, I, it says it here. Okay, verse 5, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection, <clears throat> knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Okay, so <clears throat> do you see any sin ever? out of you or out of anybody else in this church are the world. <laughs> okay, so what's the answer? Well, the answer is somebody to put on sackcloth and ashes and a big bang and go out and grow a big beard and go, go this is sin! Stop it! It's, you're destroying the, everything God wants! You know, if Jesus were there, he would say, just be quiet, okay? <laughs> yes. It's just like sackcloth and ashes is also a way to mourn the dead. 
That would be the wonder of it. We're dead. We're dead. But not. But see, here's the thing. It's not. The emphasis is not on your that you are dead. It's on he is your life. See, we go. I don't want to be dead. Do you want him to be your life? Yes. Yes. Can Can I get it another way? (laughs) And he would go. No, you kind of got to pass through the cross in him. You know. <clears throat> so, uh, verse 7, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Okay, so how do you get free from sin? You'd be dead. He that is dead is freed from sin. Well, I've been serving the Lord for 40 years. Are you free from sin? Pretty much. Are you dead? No, but I'm I'll be there in another 20 years. <laughs> no, you're dead now. If you're born again, you died with Christ and you're in Christ. And that's one of the blessings so that Christ can live in you. So anyway. Um, verse 8. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised. See, there it is again. Christ was raised. He didn't raise you. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him, for, for in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he lives unto God. Okay, So he lives unto God. That's your life. That's your resurrection. All right. You say, well, that's good theologically, but I still do stuff. You're still in him. Do you understand? You, you, don't, you don't say, well, I, every time I sin, I step outside of him. No, you don't. You're in him. You say, well, God just forbids it. He forbids it. He, he's, he's so angry, he forbids it. He forbids you to, to have gone through the death in his son and to, to, to act like you didn't die and he's your life. That's what he forbids. That's what he's upset about. <laughs> you know, he could care less about the music stand. It's the life or the lack of it that he's talking about. All right. So, <clears throat> uh, verse 10, For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead. Okay, so what is the basis for reckoning yourself dead unto sin? He died. You were in him when he died, and he put away sin. What's the answer for, uh, let's say it like this, what's the answer for righteousness? It's him. He's the answer, but he's not just the answer for righteousness. He is made unto us righteousness. You go, you're condemned. And he goes, you you are in my son. See? Does he, does he want these things to happen? No. Does he not want them to happen because he's against sin? No, not anymore. He doesn't want them to happen because he would like to get his son out of everybody that got born again and received his son. See, it really is an issue of Christ. That's why Christ in you is your hope of glory and his. <clears throat> likewise, reckon, uh, likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God. How? You're not alive unto God through being alive unto God. You're alive unto God through the one that you're in, through Jesus Christ. All right. So there's, <clears throat> there's really a whole lot. You know, I have one more class, don't I? <laughs> All right. So I can stop right there because I would very much, wow. I'd like to, I'd like to uh, finish out the whole rest of the chapter of Romans there. I'd also like to go to uh, 1 Corinthians 8. I'd also like to go to Matthew 25. So y'all pray that I can even talk faster than I did tonight.
Is anyone teaching after me? No, they have transgressing. They have transgressing? <laughs> All right, let's pray. <clears throat> Father, your spirit is so anxious in a good way. Your spirit is so anxious in a good way to get us off of ourselves and our own righteousness. Get us on Jesus and bring us into the reality of being in Christ. Father, you've been sharing night after night of the times that we've had classes on this subject, and we're, we're all about to end those, those classes. And it's so important, Father, <clears throat> that we, we get founded in the reality that we're in him, and we don't wrestle with this stuff. We seek him. We seek him to be revealed in us. We seek the truth of, of what you did at Calvary to be revealed to us and in us. And um, we, we become those that are single in our eye, Father. That we, we are single in seeing. We see Christ. We see Jesus. And um, so, Father, we thank you that your spirit is, is ready, willing, and able for anyone who will humble themselves and say, you know, I give up all my righteousness and all my goodness. And I want to know the full reality of being in him, not doctrinally, but I want to live free. I want to live by him. I want to, I want to not even have to go through the things of, of fighting my own mindsets and my own religion and all the things that, that pull me down. Father, give us that freedom to, to pray such things and to pray them with sincerity because sincerity of heart because we love your son because we actually would rather have your son than to be right in ourselves so we look to you we love you we seek you jesus thank you thank you for your word thank you and father i ask that you also bless um next week's class since it'll be the last one and to finish out the things that we've been talking about tonight. And we, th we love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name, Father. Amen. All right.